Hey everyone, let's recap Yellow Jackets Episode 9, Doom Coming. In this video, I'm going to recap the events that happened out in the woods where we start to see the unraveling of civility, and then I'll move into a recap of present day where we're starting to see quite the predicament with Shauna and Jeff. After those recaps, I'll jump into my theories, and then I will share my favorite memes of the week after Yellow Jackets Episode 9. Okay, let's recap the events out in the woods where a large portion of the episode covers the planning and events leading up to a celebration that the girls are calling Doomcoming, which will closely mirror the events of a typical homecoming dance. Misty asks Ben to go to the dance with her and he says he'll go as long as they keep their boundaries. Thaisa makes party masks so Van wouldn't feel self-conscious about her appearance, and Misty appears to be gearing up for a wild party as she retrieves some shrooms she's been stashing in a hidden binder. Unfortunately, her plans of doping Ben are squashed when Mary sees the shrooms and puts them in the soup that they will all be enjoying during the party. While gathering supplies, Jackie and Shauna discuss how they may not get out of the woods, and Jackie says she's not going to die a virgin. She alludes to the idea of sleeping with Travis regardless of his standing with Nat. The Doomcoming events kick off with everyone entering the place they've prepared for the party, and after Ty and Van enter, they kiss, finally revealing their relationship to the group. Misty sees everyone eating the soup that contains her shrooms and appears to be a bit concerned about where the night may be headed. The girls start singing Kiss from a Rose to kick off the Doomcoming dance, and Jackie begins hitting on Travis and offers him a dance. A few moments later, Jackie asks Travis if he'd like to go for a walk to get away from the group. Ben turns down Misty's request for a dance, and she seems to be devastated by his recommendation of dancing with Javi. Ben then sneaks away with Nat to drink some real booze, and they discuss Ben and Misty as well as Nat and Travis. But just as they begin talking, the shrooms kick in and Ben realizes Misty must have poisoned them. We come back to Ben and Nat later, and Ben says that love can save everything, and Nat needs to find Travis and save them all. After Nat leaves, Misty emerges from the bushes and says that she heard everything he said and attempts to come on to Ben when he finally shares with her that he's gay. The shrooms are in full effect and we see all the girls tripping and saying they can feel something coming and Lottie says that they won't be hungry much longer. Jackie and Travis go up to the attic and Jackie persuades Travis to have sex with her after giving him a speech that nothing really matters and that they basically just need to go with the flow. Travis seems to buy into this mindset and gives in to Jackie's seduction. Lottie talks everyone into looking for Jackie and Travis because Travis doesn't belong to her. The girls hear wolves howling and begin making their own animal sounds as they begin their hunt. After finishing their session, the shrooms have kicked in for Travis as he and Jackie go downstairs to find the rest of the girls have come into the cabin. Lottie shoves Jackie into the pantry and the girls all jump on Travis together in what appears to be the beginnings of some type of orgy, but then seems to transition into something very different. Travis senses that something is wrong and rushes out of the cabin. As he's running, he appears as a stag to the girls and they all chase after him as Shauna grabs a knife on her way out. The girls eventually chase down Travis and nearly kill him at Lottie's direction, and Lottie is really looking a lot like the Antler Queen here. Lottie says to Shauna, you know what to do, and Shauna nearly slices Travis's neck, but is stopped just in time when Nat and Jackie rush in. After Travis leaves the area, Lottie grabs Nat and says, it's in all of us, you know. Even him, even you. You. You! Hey! Make sure you like this video if you're enjoying this content, and be sure to subscribe to the channel and help us reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Let's get back to it. Okay, now we'll move over to the events that occurred in present day. Things kick off at Adam's place where Shauna is telling him that she knows about the blackmail and demands that Adam give her the journals back. Adam seems to not know what she's talking about, then Shauna finds magazines about the girls and the plane crash in one of Adam's cabinets. Adam says he googled her after the car accident and that he had no idea who she was before then. Shauna pulls a knife on Adam and when he tries to take it from her, she stabs and kills him. And there goes all those Adam is actually Javi theories. Over at Misty's, we find her and Jessica having a good old time telling stories, then Jessica says that the other girls have been in touch for 25 years and asks if they ever reach out to her. It's obvious they haven't, and Jessica says she would feel left out if she were Misty. Back at home, Shauna opens her safe to find that all of her journals are back in their place. She asks Jeff if he has any idea where the glitter in the closet came from, and Jeff tells her that she was never supposed to be involved. He tells her that his business was struggling, and he was hoping to get some easy cash from Ty or Natalie. Jeff says he paid off loan sharks that he borrowed money from and that it's over and they can now move past it all. Shauna replies that they can't because she murdered Adam, who she suspected was really behind the blackmail. 
She then has to inform Jeff that she stayed in touch with Adam and had a drink with him at the hotel bar. When asked why she was at the hotel in the first place, Shauna tells Jeff she was following him because she knew he was also having an affair. Jeff says Bianca was with the lone people and is distraught over learning that Shauna had been cheating on him and that the book club was a lie. Come on, Shauna. The book club? Jeff and Shauna discuss next steps, and Jeff says he's going to tell the cops that he found out about the affair and killed Adam, taking the fall for Shauna. She says he can't do that because it could get out about what the Yellow Jackets did out there and their lives would be over if this were to happen. Jeff reveals that he read Shauna's journals years ago and that he still loves her even after knowing what she did and even after the affair. Shauna tries to make a plan for their next steps and says that since nobody else knows, they have options, but Jeff says that his best friend Randy knows. Jeff makes a plan that Shauna lie to the other girls and tell them that it was actually Adam that was blackmailing them. So Shauna calls Ty and Nat and informs them that she has the guy behind the blackmail and they meet at Adam's. Ty says that getting rid of Adam isn't the only problem because Shauna's communication history with Adam can be easily discovered and tied to her as well as her DNA being all over Adam's apartment. Nat has a plan to get Misty involved to help them cover up the mess. Misty and Jessica seem to be planning a meeting between Misty and a writer where she'll apparently divulge the events that occurred out in the woods. Misty says she needs to get things off her chest and face the truth so that everyone can begin to heal. Misty hears the doorbell and finds Nat at her doorstep where Nat apologizes to Misty for how she's treated her and says that because of her citizen detective skills, they need her help getting rid of a body. All right, let's move into the theories now, and I'm gonna start back in the woods where it looks like a divide is occurring amongst the members of the group. While some of the girls are shifting into a kind of survival or animal instinct mindset, others, such as Jackie and Nat, seem to be positioning themselves opposite. If we do see a division in the group of good versus evil or right versus wrong, the biggest question in my mind is where are all of the girls going to fall? While many of them were involved in the Travis incident, they were also under the influence of shrooms, so I'm assuming some will come to their senses and side with Nat and Jackie. I would also expect Thaisa to be on the good side while Van may actually join Lottie because she's seen Lottie's vision come to fruition in the past. We don't know if Van makes it out of the woods alive or not, but if she did, it would make sense that her and Ty aren't together anymore because of her choosing to side with Lottie. Speaking of Lottie, this episode makes it pretty clear to me that she is the Antler Queen. She very quickly and comfortably took lead in the Travis situation, so I'm sure any future slayings would happen under her leadership. We'll have to see in the finale, or potentially even next season, which side everyone chooses to be on. Finally, we all have to wonder what it is that Lottie says is inside them all. I'm guessing it's probably some supernatural power that is causing all of the girls to have to stay there, but... Honestly, who knows with Lottie. I'm sure we'll understand more about that in the next episode. Moving into present day, things are really continuing to unravel with Shauna as she's now lied to the other girls in order to protect Jeff. I'm assuming this lie will eventually come to light, and I'm guessing the fact that Jeff's friend Randy knows will be a part of that. On to Misty and Jessica. I feel that Misty at this point is just keeping Jessica because she's been lonely for so long. I don't believe Misty will really speak to a writer about the events in the woods, and ultimately I think she'll kill Jessica because there's really no other way Misty walks away from kidnapping her without repercussions. All right, I do love theories, but I kind of love memes more than theories, so let's look at a few of my favorite memes from the week. Now, there are plenty of memes out there about Jeff's upset over the book club, but this is one of my favorites. On I'm not sure why. I think this meme template just gets me every time. Here's another one I love, also poking fun at Jeff's shock over there being no book club and seemingly not caring about his wife's affair. I also love this one, which highlights just how awkward the conversations must be the morning following Doom coming. Look guys, it's obvious. We're cannibals now, okay? Let's just move on. And the last meme is the one that got the biggest laugh out of me, which shows how Misty is feeling heading into the next episode. Okay, everyone, let me know your thoughts after episode 9 down in the comments, and I will see you all in the next video.